So the show's got a combination, drawings, a couple older paintings on the other side of this wall. I don't know if you guys have had a time to look around at all somewhat. Uh, drawings. Um, the beautiful thing is there's no real center to Anmi's practice. Um, she'd been producing drawings since the late 70s. She also was working on computers as early as 1980. Right? She did her first computer animation. There are going to be two interactive computer animations, both of which will be accessible online. So you'll see one of them on the other wall is being projected right now. The other one's still downloading. Um, Plorforms 1 and 2. Uh, there is a video running. She also does performance. She has a band called Club Moral that she founded with her partner in the, in the, mid, in the mid 80s. Uh, it was originally a performance venue. Um, and then the surviving, the vestigial remnants of Club Moral became uh, a quartet noise band. Um, they're going to be playing on December 1st in Bond Chapel. Um, what you're hearing, this solo guitar work, is part of a video that's on a screen you know, that you can see. It's about 20 minutes long, 23 minutes long. Uh, it's a performance that she orchestrated. Uh, uh, and it's called Adam or Eve in Paradise. Whoa. So that soundtrack will be piped throughout the, the space. So we'll have a little bit of ambiance, right? And as well as things like this two-tone pattern. So there's also decor which is kind of nice, I think. Um, um, so Ami studied graphic design, even though she wasn't going to be a graphic designer. Uh, but she thought of it as a place where she could hang a variety of interests, right? So writing is also a part of her, of her practice. So pieces like this, a flat in Belgium. Uh, the text is actually taken uh, uh, from her notes from a, a seminar that she took a screenwriting workshop that she took. Uh, and she took it with two, there were two uh, uh, British broadcast professionals who offered this screenplay writing workshop. And so she basically transposed all of her notes you know, into this piece. So in terms of, um, I would say, a sibling, uh, uh, in a very literal sense, in terms of the combination of text and image, right, that being central to graphic design, um, she would be on a parallel path in a lot of ways to somebody like Raymond Pettibone, right? Early on, late 70s, she too produced the equivalent of an underground comic, as did Pettibone, right? Very early on, was pretty much doing, had a whole, uh, uh, drawing has always been a mainstay of her practice, right? Um, but in terms of the way uh, that she combines text and image, right, using her own notes, she's a voracious reader, lots of references to uh, uh, science, the sciences, astronomy, physics, uh, not so much biology, I don't think there's a lot of biology here, but some. Right. So the um, pink ladies, um, I can't, there are four, there are four in this body of work, right? So this text is from uh, 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 a magazine from the 80s, I think, and it was a text about antimatter. And what she did is she took the word, anti, wherever the word antimatter appeared, what did you do? You took art? Antimatter and anti-sod. Anti-sod. So wherever anti-sod appears, it was. But did you change? But did you put art? Did you put art also in. Art, of course, art right. and art, art workers and, and, and philosophers right. and critics and everything. But when, but when did you, when did you, you, you put that word in? So wherever there's antimatter, you put anti-sod. Yeah. But where did you decide to put art in? Of course, no. Then I, I, it, it just came by itself because I could just like uh, here and there change the words and it all fit. That okay. Was, that was the thing. Okay, so that, that was, was basically, like a yeah, moment. improvise or, imp yeah, so, so basically you got it from the horse's mouth there, right? She took a text and altered it, right? A text on antimatter. Uh, so this text appears over these four different, different pieces. Yeah, the show is just punctuated. You know, this piece, this is the other video, the performance video, which is 2004. I think this piece is around 2001, 2002, maybe. Right, about six minutes long. But just to give an idea of, you know, the drawings, um, uh, again, the transference of ideas off the page into animation, right? 
collage practice, a digital practice. Right? In a very fearless way. And, and so I was talking to honey, it's like, you know, you have a really, and she's Belgian, so there's a whole surrealist tradition and legacy, right? And on the one hand, she's like, no, 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 I mean, surrealism, oh. And she called it mechanical. And I was like, oh wow, that's very interesting. But at the same time, you know, she's somebody who wants to produce, she wants her artwork to have an effect, right? She's really into like psychological effects, like what if it's red, what if it's blue, what is it? So this idea of wanting to, an artwork that produces an effect, you know, on the viewer, right? The use of formalisms towards that end, right? Um, uh, would link the work on the one hand to, you know, it, does that allude to a belief in the activation of the unconscious in a way that would be similar to the surrealists in a way? But at the same time, I think of her appropriation of images from fashion magazines, right? They remind me of like an Amer the American Apparel ad campaign or something, right? Like, is that, at the same time, it's also saying, it's like, is that, form of transgression legible or possible anymore, right? You know, is surrealism hopelessly outmoded or that model of the unconscious or has it been completely co-opted by the culture industry and fed back to us in advertising, right? So we can't, that transgression is no longer available to us. Right? So this is one of the interactive animations. There are two. Uh, this one has, I think, six, 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 rooms, realms. Um, so it's configured. We're going to send out a broadcast message to the world. So you can go online and, you know, you can, it's in, um, it's in QuickTime VR, right, which is already. Okay, so now I'm in another area. Yeah. Uh, um, you, the, Exploring is the interacting. This is what it does. You just you can go left, you can go right, you can zoom around, you can go click on this, and you should go to a new place. All right. So this that's the nature of the interaction. So it's um, so it's set up so that if there is nobody, anybody who interacts with it online, we will actually follow them. That's what's going to be projected, right? So you know. If there are 10 users, right, it'll go through user one, and then user one stops, then it'll click to user two, and user three. Then when there's no user at all, it'll just wander freely 